What, what's it like, mate, to get out of hospital? I mean, you've sat there staring at walls for a few weeks now. It must be a great relief to just get out and feel the world for a couple of minutes. Yeah, you know what? It's, it's kind of a weird feeling because it's kind of like your safety blanket when you're in hospital because if something goes wrong, the, the doctors are right there and, and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, going home, it's, it's a great feeling. Going home to, you know, obviously to see my girls and see them running around the house and having fun and and doing all that, it kind of uh, makes you sort of realise that all the, the crap that you're going through is, is is worth it because you get to come home and see them. So it's, it's kind of a, a funny kind of situation to be in, but uh, I, I enjoyed my first night at home. Slept terrible, but, you know, I didn't have any beats or doctors or nurses coming in during the night. It was just <laughs> me by myself and, and that. So it was kind of a, a weird night, but... Um, it's just, yeah, it's a great feeling to, to walk out of there and uh, and come home for a couple of weeks, hopefully. Mate, uh, you know, we don't want to get too personal, but by, you know, by default, this is the nature of, you know, your problem at the moment. Is it the, is it the key difference at the moment for you that you've got Lucy and Gemma there this time, obviously up and about and, you know, driving you here? Yeah, it is. I hate it is. It's, you know, golf, again, is just sort of, disappeared into the background i don't know if i'll be playing ever again or or whether i'll come back for one event and do a johnny farnham and just sort of you know <laughs> have a bit of a comeback tour and then disappear again and then come back again but uh i, I don't know what's going to happen with golf but you know obviously having the girls there and and having two kids to to watch grow up and, and take to school and and all that kind of fun stuff is, is what's really driving me at the moment has the treatment knocked you around, Jared? Uh, how are you actually bearing up with that? And I'm just wondering whether you, this is your third crack at, at beating it, and you've beaten it twice before. Um, does the familiarity with what's happening, does that kind of help you a little bit? Yeah, mate, it, it helps a lot because I, I know exactly what's to come. You know, yeah. I, know, I know how I'm going to feel. I know what's coming. I know what the chemo is going to do to me. I know that there's times where I'm going to be really, really sick and I know there's times where I'm going to be feeling good like I am now, but sitting in hospital waiting for blood counts to come back and, and sort of get to a healthy level where the doctors say, OK, you can go home for a couple of weeks before we smash you again with chemo. So it's it's just a never-ending cycle and um, obviously the experience of having it twice before and knowing knowing what's to come and, and all that is, is a good thing to, I guess, to have in the in your back pocket, but it doesn't make it any easier. And as a professional golfer, Jared, you spend a lot of time, or some do, looking at stats and being aware of just how important statistics are. How big a deal is it for you when these markers that come back about these blood levels and the things that you now, I'm sure, expert in? How big a deal is it for you on a daily or weekly basis as you're going through the treatment when you get a good number? A good number comes back from a marker perspective. How much extra spring does that give you to you know, face the next part of um, you know, the, the recovery? Yeah, mate, look, it's, it's like a birthday. You mm. know, when you, you sit there and the biggest one they sort of look at is a thing called neutrophils, which help fight off infections and, and things as well. So um, they need to get to a certain level, which is 0.5. Um, I woke up one day at about 7 o'clock and the nurse stuck her head and she goes, Jared, you got 0.1 neutrophils. And I just let out a massive cheer yeah. because it had been on zero for two weeks. You know, and I'm like, oh, it's starting to work. Something's happening. And then the next morning I woke up and it was 0.4 and I was sort of going, oh, yeah, this is great. And then it was 1.3 and I'm like, geez, it's Christmas. <laughs> yes. So it's, you know, just little things like that. It just feels like a little mini victory for me. And um, I know that that's exactly what their, their plan was. And, and I know that's what they were sort of working towards. But um, when you go from zero to one point three in three days, it's like a it's a nice little kick in the pants that you need. It puts a smile on your face, and uh, yeah, you know, it gives you that little bit of extra hope that you're going to get through it again. And, and it's important, for, sorry, Blakey, it's important for those around you too, isn't it, Jared? Because the people closest to you who are with you through this, you know, time and time and now time again, they know the numbers. They, they know what the numbers mean. So it's important for you, but I imagine it's equally as important for them. Yeah, it is, mate, because, you know, literally everyone just sits by the bed and, and there's nothing they can do to help them grow or make, you know, make any neutrophils or, or red cells or anything for me. 
So there's really nothing they can do. But when you start sort of sitting there and you understand what the blood counts are and you understand what it means to to have 0.1 of a neutrophil, you sort of sit there and, and it's, you know, again, it, it just feels good for everybody involved because mm. they can see that there's a bit of a light at the end of the tunnel again. So, you know, it, it, it's... It's a tough thing for people to sit there and watch, not just myself, but everyone else is going through it because there's really nothing anyone can do to help. Jared, does the golf industry and the golf play, the pro players, do they kind of get around you? I presume that they would. Just reading Twitter, you know, I've noticed a lot of messages that have been sent to you and stuff like that. Can you talk a little bit about, about that and some of the people that have kind of, uh, you know, not helped you out but just given you a pat on the back? Yeah, look, obviously, my, my good mate Allenby, he's, um, you know, he texts me every couple of days and just makes sure that I'm doing okay and, and things like that. But I've had so many guys, like Jason Gore has messaged me a couple of times, um, Steve Elkington, just, you know, guys that, you know, you, you sit there, and I, I know I said this the last time, but, you, you know, you sit there and you're trying to beat these guys every time you step out there and play. But, you know, they, they've all a lot of guys have taken the time to, to write me a message or... You know, just shoot me a, a, a message on Twitter or anything like that, just to just to make contact and let them know that um, that they're there. And if there's anything they can do, you know, please let them know and things like that. So it's nice to have that support from the guys that um, you know you battled against for years. And it just shows again, it just shows that the, the PGA Tour and the Aussie Tour and the Asian Tour and all the tours that I play golf on, they're just a massive family, and everyone sort of gets around people when in times of need and. Um, you know, to have the support of all those guys again is, is amazing, and uh, you know I can't thank them enough. And and just and also just the general public too. You know, it's that's been absolutely incredible to know that all these people that I've never met and probably will never meet are sending me messages and and just letting me know that there's there's people around and there's people that are you know dealing with the same stuff. And, and to know that I'm sort of helping them through it, but in in the same breath they're helping me through it as well. And for those of you who want to keep up and, and send the support to Jared, there's a, a landing page on the Golf Australia website. So it's golf.org.au forward slash good luck Jared. And we're using the hashtag good luck Jared. I'm assuming you've read all those, mate. I know it's too hard to respond to every individual one because there's been an incredible response, but that it must make you feel good knowing that, uh, you know, you've got people in there punching along with you. Yeah, oh, mate, it does. It's, it's a great feeling to sit back and, and see these messages come through and sit there and read them and, you know, you try and figure out whether you actually met this person before or you've, you've known them or you've played with them at a pro-am or things like that. But it's it's nice just to know that there's so many people out there in the world that, that care about, obviously, what I'm going through because, you know, it, it might have been... They might have been touched by something like that as well. So it's, you know, it's a great feeling and it's, it's nice to have all those, those messages come through and, and it just sort of brightens up your day a little bit. Mate, uh, the day your chemotherapy treatment started uh, this time around, Bryony was down at Challenge Cancer. Bryony, your wife, for those who don't know, she's down at Challenge Cancer uh, in in uh, West Melbourne doing a press conference to sort of, um, you know, feed out the information to the world about your, your current circumstance. Uh, an incredibly gutsy thing by her, and she did it with such great aplomb too, but down at Challenge, and I know that the guys at Challenge, particularly Dave Rogers, the CEO, very dear to your heart, uh, it's heartbreaking to walk into that office. Uh, what would you say to people who want to be able to help someone, if not you in this instance? How do they get involved with Challenge and, and what does it mean to you? Yeah, look, mate, with, with Challenge, you can um, go on their website and become a volunteer. So that's a, a good way that people can sort of get involved with, with helping kids with cancer and things like that. Or just a good old-fashioned donation. You know, you can jump on their website, challenge.org.au, and um, jump on there and just make a, a donation which goes directly to the kids and, and helps uh, with camps and, and all kinds of stuff to, uh, you know, help support them and, and get them through their tough times. And it is. It's a very... It's, oh, massively uh, important, yeah. I was yeah. down there with Bryony that day and... Uh, and um, you know, not wanting to put a dampener on this, but you know, the the staff were pretty bummed because they'd been four or five kids who'd lost their lives oh, and lost their battle the previous couple of weeks, and you just realise how important it is to be able to step up and and try and help out and do your little part, whatever form that might take, whether it's financial or just you know a little note. So you know, I, I, 
you know, I don't, I can't put words in Jared's mouth, but I know he's super impressed with everything that they, those guys do for not only him but all the kids. Yeah, so, they look. They sorry, guys. They they do a great job down at Challenge, and you know, over the last few years, they've actually sort of started helping pay for for kids' funerals and and things like that as well, which is not a a nice thing to have to do. But that's the kind of work that Challenge does. They they do a lot of stuff behind the scenes that people don't see and don't mm. recognise. So. You know, for them to step up and, and help families to, you know, give their, their child a, a, the perfect send-off um, is a great thing. And it's, it's it's a very close charity to me and something that's very dear to my heart. And to be able to play a part in doing that kind of stuff, you know, to help help families send off their child, it's, it's a great feeling and, um, you know, something I'm very proud of and I'm very proud to be associated with Challenge. Justifiably, mate. Uh, and I can I know that there's been a big rush on the Luke the Duck pins, which is a, another thing to dear to your heart. But those things are going to be worth more than uh, coins one day soon, mate. Yeah, they will, mate. And it's it's nice to be able to you know get pictures from golf courses and have um, all these you know Luke the Duck head covers and pins and all that kind of stuff on everybody's golf bags and hats. It's, it just shows me that there's a lot of very very genuine people around around the world and around Australia that, that want to help and support everybody and um, you know to, to to play a tiny little part in that and help get those products out there to everybody in Australia is is a great feeling for me and it's it's something that if I get through this again I'll be out there pushing it as hard as I can to you know to help raise a bit more money for challenge and and just do my part as an ambassador. So what do you do with the days off, mate? I don't know how many how many when the, when you have to go back inside. But while you don't have to be in the hospital, can you do much when you go home? Yeah, look, it's um, I can do as much as I can. Obviously, you know, sitting around for for three weeks in hospital is um, it's it's taken its toll. Of you know, my, my chicken legs that I usually have are a bit more chickeny as my wife. <laughs> You'll be wasting away, man. How's the hospital <laughs> food? I know you no. like to shift some food, a bit like me and Hazy. Yeah, I know. Well, it's, you know, you said that I don't weigh 66 kilos like Justin Thomas, <laughs> but I'm, I'm working on it. The old chemo diet's uh, oh. that's under 100 kilos now, so oh. it's, uh, it's, a, it's a different looking Jared Lyle, put it that way. <laughs> I, know, I know that uh, Bryony used to give me hell when uh, Jared was just coming through the ranks. Every time I wrote a story, I didn't even realise I was doing it, but every time I did it, Wrote a story on him. I called him Burley, and she came up to me one day and gave me a real backhander. He's not that Burley. <laughs> what? So, what do you do when you? I mean, you're obviously trying to get better, and you've got a heap of treatment, and there's a million things going on when you're in there. But you've got to be able to pass the time, other than sort of just you know being a pin cushion for the docs and the nurses in the place. What do you do? You know, for the three weeks, is there a way you found that kind of adequately passes your time? Um, well, I started doing my bridging program through the PGA. So I'm trying to um, figure out how much of the, the written stuff, the written assessments I can get done while being in there. Because yep. I want to, obviously, I want to continue with that and, and try and get it finished, you know, as soon as I get out of hospital, pretty much. But, um, you know, it's just a bit of a battle because you might start doing something and then then the doctors will come in and then you sort of, you lose your train of thought and then um, you, you just... I don't know, it's a, it's a funny thing because people just come in whenever they want and they want to do stuff and then you have your OBS taken and then you have, you know, someone wants to come in and recheck your blood pressure and, and all that. So there's always people coming in and you've got visitors coming in. So it's hard to sort of get a lot of stuff done. But I'm slowly figuring out the morning TV is terrible. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> and I do have a bit of a, not a problem, but I'd love, I'd love buying stuff on on. Like through shopping TV, eBay. And stuff like that. You're an eBay, oh, no. mate. So the last time when I was sick in 2012, I ended up buying a set of uh, saucepans and a steam mop. <laughs> and a what? A steam mop. A steam mop. Yeah. <laughs> did it have any steak knives with it? No, but I did get a free bigger saucepan because I was one of the first 30 callers. <laughs> so it's uh, just just silly little things like that. But you know, I've I've pretty much been told that. If I make one purchase, my credit card's getting cut up. So, uh, <laughs> I can look, but I can't touch. 